All right, you guys, this is future Bryce um, recording this. I actually have already recorded the video that you're about to watch, and I just got off with Aquarius Rising Africa, where we were talking about Mahaley Lancaster. As you'll see, I mentioned that in the upcoming video. But as I've gotten off the show, I feel like I needed to add a little bit to this video. And I'm being very clear at this point. We did this video today. Jessica Jones and Shanti and I did a video today over Mahaley Lancaster. It was going to be a more lighthearted video because we have been covering a lot of very heavy topics lately. And it was going to be to venerate and show respect to Mahaley Lancaster, to her life and her legacy. I have never in my life been more pissed off as I was watching the chat over Mahaley Lancaster. If you consider yourself to be a Christian, then you need to have some self-reflection. All these Christians sit here and say that they are so persecuted. No, you're not. No, you're not. First of all, you're the biggest religion in the world. No one is persecuting you. I'm not going over to church YouTubes and leaving comments about how you guys are actually worshiping Satan because you are. But then you come to my channel, we're going to talk about the truth and we're going to talk about research. Now, with Mahaley Lancaster, as many of you guys know, she was an oracle. And especially Lisanne Cornelis, I'm going to say your name because you had the audacity to be so unbelievably disrespectful to a person who that we are venerating, who, who we are respecting, who has passed away. You had the audacity and the narcissism and the evil in your heart to be so disrespectful to the memory of somebody else. You desecrated. You came in and tried to desecrate the memory, Lisanne, of somebody else. And yet, and yet, you want to pretend like you are the Miss Perfect person who's in total alignment with God. Judge not least, you be judged. After we were filming, we were talking about your comments and how unbelievably out of touch you are with reality. And how unbelievably narcissistic you are. You literally think for some reason that you are God on earth here to judge other people. And I've got a little something for you, honey. You aren't. You aren't. And if you want to be a God-fearing woman, then be a God-fearing woman and treat people with kindness. If you don't like the fact that we're on a show talking about somebody who was an oracle, then don't watch the show. But no, you watch the show so you can come into the comment section so you can and you can bully. You are going to be blocked from my channel permanently because that is disgusting. You are disgusting. You should be on your knees asking for forgiveness from God for the way that you spoke to us and the way that you spoke about Mahaley Lancaster. You should be asking for forgiveness for the hate and the hateful heart that you projected onto a person who is no longer alive. You are a disgusting human being. You are disgusting. And thank God I don't go to your church. Because let me tell you something, Lee San Cornelis, you and I do not worship the same God. I worship the God of light, the creator God, who would never speak this way about another human being. You obviously worship a lesser God of darkness. Because you felt like you had the right to come on that chat and treat other human beings that way. If you, again, I'm going to say this. If you don't like what we are talking about, don't watch the show. Don't watch the show. I don't like Christian websites because they're lying to you. And let me tell you something, Lisan. Just because you don't like the fact that Moloch's original name was Yahweh doesn't mean it's not a fact. Your feelings are not facts. Facts are facts. And if you actually do your ever-loving research and take responsibility for the information you're spewing to other people, then you would know that that's not an opinion, but that's a literal fact. It doesn't take a genius to do this research and go through historical documentation to understand where we've been duped. And if you look in Revelation, Lisa, and your own Bible, at the end of Revelation, it actually tells you, it tells you, darling, that the God of the Bible is the devil. It tells you at the end of Revelation. So if you're too much of a dummy to actually do your research and instead you're going to stick to your ego and your opinions and pretend like your opinions are the only ones that matter and you're going to try to shut down literal facts 
literal evidence, then you are no better than the bad guys of the world because you're behaving exactly like the bad guys of the world. You are their puppet. After we got off, I've decided, Lisa Cornelis, I don't know, but I think you just might be an organic portal. I don't think you actually have an ever-loving soul because somebody who had a soul would have never spoken to people that way or about a recent or deceased person that way. Nobody else in the comment was doing that. Do you really follow the Prince of Peace and behave that way? You will know them by their actions, by the fruits. What does Shanti say all the time? It says in the Bible, you will know them by their fruits. Well, he's saying, we see your fruits. You're a bully. You're a You lie. So do you really follow the Prince of Peace? Or do you follow the Prince of Darkness? Because your actions are showing the world that you follow the Prince of Darkness. Have some respect for human beings. If you don't like what people are talking about in a show, don't watch the show. Don't watch the show because now, I mean, when we got off the camera, you guys, both Shanti and Jessica said they thought I was channeling Mahaley because the anger at the way that you were speaking to us and about Mahaley was unacceptable. Unacceptable. Who raised you? Who fucking raised you? Because where I'm from, we don't speak to people that way or about the dead that way. We show reverence and respect. So nonetheless, guys, nonetheless, guys I wanted to add that in. I'm going to be taking a hard boundary. You, If you start to use God as a weapon, which is what Lisa Ann Cornelis was kind of doing. She was using God as a weapon. If you do that shit, you're going to get blocked. You're going to get blocked. We don't play that game on this channel. This channel, we are about the truth, finding the truth, and we love God. Right now, our religions are not telling you the truth. And if you're part of the biggest religion in the world, in the world, and you don't think it's corrupt, then that's a dumb, dumb problem on your part. That's an intellect problem. And yeah, the Bible has a copyright on it. Look it up. If that's the word of God, there would be no copyright. This is facts. Just because you don't like the facts doesn't mean they're not facts. You can't change the truth. Just because the lie sounds better to you than the truth doesn't mean you get rid of the truth. That's a you problem. Anyway, guys, sorry. Sit back, relax, enjoy this show. Before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called the Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hey, TikTok, how's everybody doing? This goes out to everybody out there in North Carolina, back on the East Coast. Now, me, I'm on the West Coast. I, I can't get out there, but I am just laughing my ass off right now. So, to those that were involved with the um, director that you... Uh, so politely took care of out there that was being arrogant and withholding goods. To those of you that did that, I applaud you. Big applause. Me? I have... I wouldn't tolerate that shit. That's treason. But I want to congratulate each and every one of you out there that stood your grounds and took care of business with that director. Do more of it. Keep going, baby. We're behind you. We're just distant. Love you. Bye-bye.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and today is Monday, October 7th, 2024. I cannot believe it is already October in 2024. I still feel like it's like 2021. It's crazy how fast time is is flying. Um, we've spoke about it before a long time ago on a show about the quickening which was Native American theory that when we came to this point in our timeline where timelines would be switching, basically, we would be ascending or descending, um, we, our time would actually speed up, we would be going into a quickening. And I definitely can agree that that is what's going on. So I wanted to touch base with you guys about this upcoming week, because I appreciate you guys so much. And of course, I very much appreciate all of our patrons and our producers who financially support this channel. So I, I felt like I needed to give you guys a bit of an update. Um, as you guys know, as I've been speaking about on TikTok, um, and most people who just know what's going on in the world, the Southeast got hit by a Category 4 hurricane, um, Helene. Um, just to give you guys a perspective, Katrina was Category 3. So this is category four. Most of you guys were super, super awesome in the response I put on the community tab. And if you want more information on what's going on, I have been reposting a lot of stuff on TikTok about the situation in the Appalachian Mountains. Now, with that being said, I'm at the base of the Appalachian Mountains. There's really no emergency where I live. Atlanta was supposed to get hit, but it really didn't. We just had a lot of rainfall and, and 100 mile per hour winds. We basically shut the city down for a couple of days, but we had nothing. I mean, our, our power only flickered, like nothing catastrophic happened. Um, the hurricane definitely went in a direction that it typically doesn't go in. I'm not going to get into the my thoughts because I've got thoughts around that here on YouTube just because of this platform. But again, I have been reposting a lot of the information about the area in North Carolina, Tennessee, South Carolina that got hit over on TikTok. So if you're interested in what I'm talking about in that location, please go over to TikTok and just look at the repost of everything that I've been posting coming from other people. Now, with that being said, obviously there's a lot going on because the four letter agency, the four letter agency that's up there right now is basically messing up big time and has done piss the people off because as you guys probably are aware if you're watching a lot of the people from the area and their own accounts the four letter agency is basically blocking people from helping and they themselves any donations they're receiving um, money or otherwise is being stored in warehouses from what I am hearing from people there and not actually being deployed out to people who need these resources. Um, now, I and myself have been considering my options of what I can do to be of service to the people of Appalachia. I've been heavily researching because, again, I'm four hours away from the danger zone from point zero. And so I, I consider doing a fundraiser with you guys and just encouraging. I have 54,000 subscribers. So I was like, maybe if everybody just donated a dollar, it's $54,000 and we could get a bunch of tents, a bunch of sleeping bags, medicine, food, bottled water, gasoline, whatever these people need. I can take that $54,000 and go here in Atlanta and get the stuff and then drive it myself up to the area. However, in doing that research, what we have learned is that a lot of the roads obviously getting into these towns have been completely cut off or you can't even, like I drive an SUV and in a good day on it when there is no disaster, my SUV would probably make it up into Appalachia, but normally when we go up into Appalachia, we take the truck, we have a truck as well, um, that's built more for um, these roads. Because even without the hurricane, some of these back roads, if you've seen some of my videos, you can only go like five miles an hour because they're so bad, they're not paved, they're, they're ditches, and you really have to have an appropriate car to get up there. But what people are saying in that area is that even people with trucks aren't able to access. So they're looking for people with ATVs, with dirt bikes, or with horses. I've even seen some goats being used to carry in supplies. Um, and people, they're calling for people who know the mountain, like grew up there and like know the back ways to get into towns to come in and help climb these mountains on foot to bring in supplies. So, um, so what I am thinking um, was probably the best call to action. I've reached out to a few people in the area that are actively helping to ask 
what it is they think my channel and Esoteric Atlanta, the community can do to help them help other people. And so I'm just waiting to hear back. But I have been researching other nonprofits that are in the area um, that are, according to eyewitness accounts, these are two nonprofits that are actually doing what they're supposed to do. And they're actually trying to help save lives. And this is Samaritan's Purse and savetheallies.org. These are two organizations that are literally, according to multiple witnesses, they are there. I think Samaritan's Purse was one of the first organizations there after the, uh, the devastation to try to help. And so for now, what I'm going to encourage you guys to do, even if you're from another country, even if you can just donate like a dollar or a pound or a euro, you know, if, if everybody in the world donated one dollar, one pound, one euro, or 50 cents at that at that at that matter then we could really help these people um who need our help right now these human beings who need our help i had somebody in the comment section uh i thought this was a beautiful analogy she talked about these small towns in appalachia being almost like islands and i think that's a great way to describe chimney rock and Asheville and all of these towns is like islands and even if you look at a map they seem like they're pretty close together and they seem like they are close to bigger cities and they might be mile wise like mild mile wise they might not be that far but because of the terrain you know two miles so it would take me what a couple minutes to drive two miles on a flat road but in the mountains, two miles could take 20 to 30 minutes to drive because the terrain is so rough and because it's so curvy. And so a lot of these towns, even on a good day, are very much, this person was right, are like islands. You know, you, you have to like really need to leave the town to leave the town because it's it's quite um, it's quite a hike. And I think that's why people love these towns, right? Like people vacation there a lot because you're kind of secluded. And it, they're beautiful towns and the air is super fresh. And, you know, you've got these like restaurants with homemade food and, you know, it's it, they got beautiful hiking trails. And so it, you, you get to kind of get out of, of society with not actually leaving society because they are towns. Um, but nonetheless, that's the situation. Um, the horror stories that I've just it's it's made me actually it's infuriated me. We knew that our. Our leaders will say, I'm going to be careful how I say this on YouTube, but we have known that the powers that be are not on our side for a long, I mean, just look at a history book. You, you have to be pretty dumb, pretty dumb to think that the leaders of your country are on your side. You know, you just, again, no time in history has the leaders of a country been on the people's side. And I think that this is very much like they're not even trying to hide it anymore. Like they're not even trying to hide it. And, um, I've gotten a lot of people messaging me from other countries about the men up in North Carolina who detained the four letter agency man. Basically, I'm just going to say it for lack of a better word on YouTube, put him under citizen's arrest so that personnel could get in and, and actually rescue. And I've had a lot of people message me about that. That is actually the reason why these men have not gotten in trouble is because they are within their constitutional rights to do that. So in our constitution, the United States of America, we are told that if a government, we are told that, I'm trying to know how I watch, how I say this. We are told that the tippy top of the pyramid, that the Illumishmati, that the powers that be, our controllers, if they become tyrannical, that it is the people's job to overthrow them by any means necessary. Well, first by trying to vote them out, but if that doesn't work, then by any means necessary. And so the reason why these men, this is what makes America such a great damn country. The reason why these men have not gotten in trouble is because they're within their legal right to do that. They're within their, their legal right to do that. And all they did was detain him so that American citizens could come in and do what needed to be done. That's what makes America so badass. And I have been saying this since 2020 that this is a part of our our constitution and that the powers that be if i were part of the powers that be i would be scared because i know that's in the constitution and they have every legal right to do that the people and we're seeing that enacted now in north carolina and i want to say too i watched this um TikTok where this guy was like you messed with the wrong people 
you know, people make fun of mountain people a lot. And I, before we get into it, let me just say something as well about the people in these towns. I've heard a lot of people saying, oh, well, they're just hillbillies. They're trying to get rid of the poor people. Guys, Chimney Rock in Asheville, these are wealthy towns. These are wealthy what filthy wealthy towns now are there poor people of course there are poor people everywhere but these towns for the most part are very wealthy people i mean some of these quote-unquote cabins that people have their cabin home up in chimney rock or Asheville are bigger than most people's like real homes now with that being said in saying that these people are rich they're not part of the establishment they're just wealthy right and they have been sucker punched as well. You know, they, they, their homes are gone now. They're absolutely gone. So this is not about getting rid of poor people because a lot of rich people were also affected by this hurricane. And again, these aren't rich people as in like the 1%, but they're wealthy people within the 99%, if that makes sense. So they're not bad people. They're not part of the club. They're just wealthier. Well, they're wealthier peasants, we'll say. So no, it's not an attack on a particular demographic of people. Um, in my opinion, it's about the land, which again, go back to my TikTok and you'll see every reason why I think it's about the actual land in that area. But the thing about mountain people as well, and I'm, again, let's get back to the actual people that were affected by this, this natural, natural, we'll say disaster. I've talked about Appalachia a lot. I have a huge reverence for the Appalachian Mountains. Huge reverence. You guys know I've talked a lot about a lot of folklore in Appalachia. It's one of the most beautiful places in the whole world. And I've lived all over the world, literally lived all over the world. And there is no place quite as beautiful as the rolling hills, the Smoky Mountains of Appalachia. It's just breathtakingly. Driving through Kentucky or Virginia is one of the most breathtaking drives that you will ever take. It is gorgeous. With that being said, though, you have to respect the mountain. This is the oldest mountain chain in the world. Hear me again when I say this. The Appalachian Mountains are the oldest mountain chain in the entire world. They're older than the Pyrenees. They're older than the Rockies. We know this because of the way the hills roll. That's showing their age. And if you... Like Johnny Dem John Denver wrote the song West Virginia, which West Virginia is not what got hit, but it's the same mountain chain. And he says, life is old there, older than the trees. And that's because this is a very old, this is one of the most ancient parts of our world is Appalachia. And when you're looking at Appal the Appalachians, it is tough survival. So for these people who are from this area of the world, most of them have had family there for many, many, many generations. They're tough people. They're tough people. They're kind people. They take care of each other. They have to take care of each other because it is the mountains. You know, they're not used to hurricanes, of course, but they're used to other things going wrong. And so, so when we're dealing with the people, especially the men in the area that are tr the citizens, the private citizens that are trying to help, they're a lot tougher than most of our government officials are because they have to be. They have to be to be able to live in that area of the world. You know, it's definitely it, it, special people live in the mountains and they know the mountains. They understand the mountains. They know the back. They know how to. I said this with Catherine Edwards. It's like the sound of music where she says, these are my mountains. I grew up in these mountains. It's kind of this. This is their mountains. This is their home. You know, they understand the wildlife. Right. So they understand the urban legends. They understand the cryptids. And so. These are, this is a tough group of people to mess with. You know, I, their, their whole life for many generations has been survival in these mountains. And not only surviving, but they've been thriving in these mountains, creating these beautiful towns, these beautiful resorts, these carving out hiking trails and whitewater rafting trails, you know, so they're thriving. They're not just surviving, they're thriving. And so you get a, like a pipsqueak from Washington, D.C., they're not going to have what it takes to understand the mountains and they're not going to have what it takes to challenge the people from this area. And so it doesn't surprise me that these men in this area enacted their constitutional rights and detained the four letter agent that was trying to stop them from helping their, their neighbors out, you know, and that's, that's pretty badass. That's pretty badass. If you, if you ask me, because, and also, you know, they, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, this might 
not make sense to a lot of people. It does to me, though, spiritually and karmically. So North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia specifically are three of the original colonies. So again, I've said this before. If you look at the uh, American flag, every flag has meaning. So the American flag, there's 50 stars. That stands for all 50 states. And then there, are, there are 13 red and white stripes. The 13 red and white stripes are the 13 original colonies that started the United States. So Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina are three of those original colonies. So Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina not only have a stripe on the flag, but also have a star on the flag. All right, so the whole Eastern Seaboard is a special place for patriots. Karmically, energetically, the people in these original 13 colonies remember. They remember 1776. Most of them karmically and energetically have some sense of integral or integration of what happened in these particular states over 200 years ago. And not only that, a lot of these people are descendants of patriots who fought in that revolution. And that is very important to I myself. So we have in the United States, I know I've talked about how I want one family line, I descend from the royal family, but I also descend from patriots. So my we have this organization here in America. It's called the Daughters and the Sons of the American Revolution. And this is an organization. So for me as a woman, like my mother is part of the DAR, the da Daughters of the American Revolution. And my father is part of the SAR, Sons of the American Revolution. So what this means is that my parents, so we'll say my, both my mom and my dad have actual proof and paperwork showing that they are direct descendants of a man who fought in the American Revolution for the Patriots, for the colonist, um, direct descendants. So this doesn't mean like some great, great uncle or some cousin that you are direct. This is your great, 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 whatever grandfather, one of them that you directly descend from and you get it notarized. So it gets notarized. So you have legal documentation that you are a direct descendant of the American Revolution. And so I have that on both sides of my family. So me personally, I am a direct descendant of two men who fought in the American Revolution for the colonists, for freedom. And that is really important to us in, in this country. And even though for us, it, it feels like that was so long ago, it was you know over 200 years ago, in the span of history, that was yesterday. Okay, so it's easy for us right now to keep up with this documentation. And if I had a child, I would get myself registered so that my child would have my documentation to take and register him or herself. If my, my boyfriend would probably do the same thing because my boyfriend's father is a son. He's also, my boyfriend's dad is registered as a son of the American Revolution. So my, my boyfriend also descends from a patriot. And that's unique too, because only 3% of the colonists actually fought in the American Revolution. It wasn't, it was a very small percentage of the colonists that actually participated in our freedom. And so that's a pretty big deal. If, if there's no such thing as a med American pedigree, but if there were, I would say that the descendants of the American Revolution probably would be the closest thing to that. Um, not from an egotistical perspective, but just because we are the descendants of people who risk their lives to, to make us free. And, um, and so when you're looking at Hurricane Helene, you're also dealing with that energy as well. So not only are people pissed off because they're watching their towns be destroyed and their loved ones are missing and the government's not helping, but they're also upset because they, they remember energetically, karmically, they've been here before and they're not afraid to do it again. Um, there's a great saying, I, I, and I thank all the people around the world who have made videos in support of America right now. Thank you. That means a lot. And I am sure once the people who are stranded understand how many people were behind them, I'm, I'm sure it will make a huge difference in their healing. So I thank you for that. But I saw a Swedish couple say that, you know, the one thing about Americans is that they are they are courageous people. Americans would rather die on their feet than live on their knees. And that's so important because it is so true. Americans would rather die on their feet than live on their knees. And so, um, yeah, anyway, but that's been crazy because, you know, down here in Atlanta, Atlanta is Georgia is considered Empire State South because of Atlanta, because Atlanta is the New York of the South. It's the hub of the South. And so because Atlanta is the New York of the South, you have we have a lot of people here 
who are from Asheville or from North Carolina, from Chimney Rock, or have family in this area of the world. And so it's heavily affected Atlanta. A huge demographic of people here know people up there and are looking for loved ones up there. Another demographic of people here might not have family up there, but they sure as hell have been up there a lot themselves for vacations. And so it's devastating for them just to think about the the wreckage that has happened on uh, to American citizens. And so, you know, it's still going on. Um, tomorrow we'll probably be here. Um, at some point this week, we're going to talk about it. Uh, we've been film we've been c communicating obviously back and forth um, about the situation and um, and what's going on. And she, of course, with her friendship with Ricardo Bozzi, um, she's able to kind of get some insight as well. And so we're gonna probably be filming a little bit later this week, which is kind of an update. Now on top of that, guys, we have two more hurricanes heading to towards us. We have Hurricane Martin that's about to hit Florida. And then there's another one coming right after. So it does feel like an attack. That's what it feels like. Sorry, my boyfriend came home, so I had to pause it for a minute, minute so you saw a weird pause there. I'm going to try not to edit this video, so that's why I'm <laughs> trying to just keep going. Um, but Hurricane Martin has headed its way towards Florida. It looks like it's about to hit where my um, family is. But, you know, and that's not, I'm not looking for pity or anything. In Florida and in Georgia, we're used to hurricanes. Like, it sucks, but we know what to do. Up in North Carolina, they're not used to hurricanes. They don't know what to do. That's the big difference, right? And so we're keeping an eye on Hurricane Martin right now. We're just kind of watching the Doppler radar just to kind of see um, if it moves. Then we've got another one heading directly after that. So um, with that being said, I'm going to try as best as I can to keep up with my regular filming schedule. But I don't know what this month is going to hold if we get hit hard in Atlanta, which if we get hit hard in Atlanta, it's not going to be as big of a deal as it is in North Carolina. We the, the the big thing that might happen is we just might lose power for a while. You know, um, we do have a lot of Atlanta is known as a green city. So we have a lot of trees. So the trees fall down on power lines, that kind of stuff. But we're not going to the chance of us flooding is very slim um, because we're not up in the mountain. We're not in little hamlets in the mountain. Right. We, we can get out of the city. So um, so we'll see how that plays out with these hurricanes, but if the schedule is a little wonky this month, that's why. And I wanted to let you guys know, especially my patrons and my producers who do financially support this channel, I wanted you guys to know why it might be a little bit wonky. It's it's literally um, because of what's going on in this area. And, um, you know, there is talk of like martial law because of this, which I'm not even going to get into what that means because of the platform that we're on right now. You can look that up. There's some TikToks about that as well. Um, so anyway, uh, today, probably after or before this video drops, I'm going to be on with Shanti on Aquarius Rising Africa with my friend Jessica Jones, who's also down here in Georgia. We're going to do a fun episode today. We've been doing some pretty heavy episodes with the Borgias and, um, you know, the Shmejewits, you know, um, and the saints and necromancy and witchcraft and all that kind of stuff has been kind of heavy. And I am in the process of really trying to research the Spanish Inquisition to do a really big deep dive into the Inquisition and what was really going on, which is also really heavy. Um, my research has been very sporadic, though, again, because of this hurricane, because of what's going on. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to do some more lighthearted episodes on Monday. Today, we're going to be talking about Mahaley Lancaster, which I will tag those videos down below. Um, Mahaley Lancaster is a enigma here in Georgia. She's no longer living. She passed away in 1955, so she's been gone for a while now. But she is um, a fun person to talk about. I Again, I've covered her. Um, Jessica has more of a connection to her because Jessica's grandmother was actually in the process of writing a book about Mah Mahaley Lancaster's life. And so we're going to just have some fun today and talk about this this very special woman, this very spe special Southern, eccentric Southern woman um, over on Aquarius Rising Africa today, this Monday. And then Wednesday, what Shanti and I are going to start doing is we're going to start going through some true crime. So on Wednesday, we're going to be talking about the Menendez brothers and all the revelations that have happened with their case in these last few years and what happened when they first were tried in the 90s. Um, I'm probably going to give, I've got all my notes, so I'm going to do, probably be filming a little bit later today, kind of a recap of everything of the case, just for you guys, especially those of you guys who are not Americans that hopefully will drop tomorrow, Tuesday, October 8th, just so you guys can have a bit of, um, an understanding of the timeline and like who these brothers are. And we're going to talk some paranormal stuff too, because there are definitely paranormal accounts out there that, uh, 
have been tracking the Menendez house. And there's some crazy, crazy photos of Jose Menendez potentially haunting the house still. So um, usually ghosts don't scare me, but Jose Menendez was not a good guy. So I'm imagining in death, he's probably not a good dead dude either. So, um, but anyway, we're going to talk about that. There is a possibility that um, Lyle and Eric Menendez could be released in the next month or so. They're going to appeal the case again given all this new evidence which is wild if that happens um and we're going to be talking about that and kind of going over different perspectives on whether they should be released whether they were victims whether they weren't victims you know is there a, a bigger conspiracy here all that kind of stuff so that will be a uh, i don't want to say a fun case to go through because these are people's human lives that we're talking about but an interesting case that will be an interesting case to explore um i'm also looking at some more some funner episodes to do funner more fun funner more fun. some some halloweeny episodes to do since we are coming up on halloween there is one special episode i do want to film with my friend cindy uh, at sacred garden yoga because there is a uh, cemetery that I actually go to a lot. It's very close to Sacred Garden Yoga where I teach uh, during the week with my friend Cindy who's come on my channel a lot. Um, that's super haunted. It's one of the most haunted cemeteries in the world and there is a very, I don't want to say special person very, very buried there because um, we're all special. Every person buried there is special but there is a very unique person that is buried there and that she's not, this unique person is not part of the haunting but it just adds more interest into this particular cemetery. So we're going to be filming that at some point. I don't know if we'll get a chance to film it before Halloween or maybe after Halloween. Again, it, it just depends on these hurricanes. So, um, so yeah, be looking out for that too. And I do have a list of y'all's urban legends and stories from around the world that I am going to be looking into. So I thank you so much for providing those because I love this stuff. Urban legends to me are so fascinating. It's kind of like history because I nothing comes from nothing. Something come things always come from something. Like what's the genesis of these urban legends? They can't just come out of nowhere. They might be exaggerated now. They might be you know have taken on a different life now, but they have to have come from somewhere. And so I'm really excited to kind of look deeper into these urban legends and. I don't know, trying to figure out, we can Nancy Drew this stuff, you know, and try to figure out what's actually going on because the more we learn, the less we know. And I'm, I'm a believer in the paranormal for sure. I definitely think that we know nothing when it comes to the truth of our, our reality, reality. We only believe what we've been told to believe. Um, and so I can't wait to dig into this stuff with you guys even more um, just to see what's, what's really going on in this, in this crazy place called earth that we, all somehow agreed to come back to. So um, also, I want to do a breakdown of a television show that I have been watching that I freaking love. And it is a shame that this show is not given as much credit or people. It's, it's, I guess television shows are weird now. It's not like back when we had cable where there were all these commercials, right? It's all on YouTube and, and streaming platforms. So I can understand why it's hard for certain shows to pick up steam. But there is a television series called From, F-R-O-M, From. And this is from the executive producers of Lost. Now, if you were like me, Lost was massively disappointing. The first three seasons were great, and then it just went to hell in a handbasket and there was really and from what I understand what happened with Lost is that the writers of Lost had the first three seasons written but they didn't know themselves the full story or how the story was going to end and so when Lost got so popular they were like frantically just trying to create a story um but with From the main actor this this guy who was in Lost I can't remember the actor's name right now forgive me but he plays the character he plays in From is Boyd Stevens and he was he's a black guy he, he you would recognize him from lost and i was watching a, an interview with the cast and when they um approached him about doing from the executive producers who knew him from Lost, he said that he wanted to make sure that there was a full story because he didn't want the same thing happening with from that happened with lost he wanted there to be a complete story and they said yes that they had an, that they learned their lesson and they have a complete story with from to to start shooting and so it deals basically the premise of this it's it's considered sci-fi but i don't consider it sci-fi i consider it more horror paranormal horror psychological horror too 
it's um about these random people so it's very lost esque if it's a it's a small cast it's a very intimate cast and they are kind of lost but not like the airplane that landed on the island what happens with this cast this ensemble cast in the show is that um all of these people are on a road trip at some point at different times and they all pull off the freeway and they get stuck in this town that they can't get out of. And the crazy thing is that they're all in different parts of the United States. When they get stuck, they all see a, a tree that falls down. They have to detour. They see ravens and then they get stuck in this like nightmarish town with these random strangers and so you know psychologically whenever new people come into town you, you see them having to deal with the reality that they can't get out that they can't get out of this town they're stuck with all these people from all over the united states different walks of life different demographics and they're all trying to explain to him we're stuck we don't we don't know how we this happened but we've all been here for you know months to years now and we can't get out of this town uh, and the first scene when the actors looks at the Boyd Stevens character and was like, but this is impossible. And Boyd Stevens character goes, yeah, it is. It's impossible. We don't know. You know, we're just trying to live and survive. Now, with that being said, they're not just stuck in this town at night. These monsters come out to basically unalive them. Um, and these monsters are very reminiscent of black eyed children, but they're adults. And so they they figured out ways to protect themselves at night. So they, there's these old houses in this town. I mean, it's a very weird town um, that they live in. And they, they find these little talisman that they put on the door and they lock the doors and cover the windows. And they put these little talisman up on the windows and you hear the, the monsters knocking on the door and they mimic people that you knew in your life. Okay, let me in, let me in. I'm your grandma, let me in. But you can't let them in. And so when the scene opens, it had been like three months since there was an unaliving because they've kind of figured out the people living there, how to survive. But of course, as the show goes on, they're trying to figure out how to now get out, right? Because this is no, no life. Um, anyway, it's a really great show. Um, it's based on, from what I understand, some of Edgar Allan Poe's work. Um, they're, they're doing that a lot now. Like the fall of the House of Usher was based on an Edgar Allan Poe um, story. So uh, that's interesting that, that these writers are pulling from Edgar Allan Poe. I'm a huge fan of Edgar Allan Poe. I'm actually very much a fan of the macabre. And the reason why I'm a fan of the macabre is because when we look at these stories, like, like in From, as well as a lot of Edgar Allan Poe's stuff, there's a lot of like just psychology that's scary. It's not just um, the actions of the story, but it's the literal human psychology that is terrifying and you think about that like what would you do if you were on a road trip and you just ended up in this place and you couldn't get out you knew that your family was looking for you on the other side of this you don't have you've left behind husbands wives fiancés friends you've just ended up here you, you had no intention of disappearing and now you've got to protect yourself against these paranormal monsters that come out at night and you have to learn how to work with all these people that you don't know that you've just met you know and it's it's very to see the human psychology of where people's minds go when they're put in when they're backed up against the wall especially since they didn't want to be backed up against the wall it's very very interesting to see how these actors play these characters and um some of them you see them starting to kind of go mentally wackadoo which i don't blame them i think that would be the most nightmarish part of this whole thing it wouldn't be the monsters outside of their house but the monsters in their own head you know when they when they're literally stuck you know, and the fact that they're now living in a society where they don't have the rules of society, they don't have money, they don't have the same, you know, matrix that we have in our in our real world. There's no cell phone service, there's no internet, there's no television. You know, there is a radio, but it's kind of weird. You'll have to watch the show to see why. Um, and you're just trying to like survive and you see and every single character is a different age again a different age different gender different background and so what i find interesting is the way that the different ages respond to this psychological kind of torture so the younger people like the people in their 20s and maybe some of their 30s choose to live in what they call colony house which is like a commune and they're the ones who party 
they're the ones who are like partner swapping. You know, it's just one big rave basically, which from a 22, 23, 24, 25 year old, you know, now that you, all your responsibility is out the window and you've got other 22, 23, 24, 25 year olds stuck there, you can kind of live on the wild side without having to take any responsibility because there's no job to go to. There's no bills to be paid. But then on the other side of it, you have the town where people like older people pick to live in the town. And these are people, there's not many kids. There's only like one kid, but these are more families and older people in like their late thirties, early forties that don't want to party all the time that want to have some sense of normalcy. So it's just super interesting to see like psychologically how people respond to this. And that's, that's interesting to me because not only do, does history interest me and urban legends interest me, but obviously human psychology interests me as well in philosophy. That's why I studied a lot of yoga in India. Um, and so it's it just how people just deal with this, you know. And so I would love for you guys to watch that series if you can. And I want to do a deep dive. I've been kind of deep diving some of it already, some of the occult symbolism in it. Because um, I think it would be an interesting one to talk about and maybe to do a roundtable about that show because there's a lot to it there's a lot to it and again my, my whole perspective is that there's more to reality than meets meets the eye and even though this is based on an Edgar Allan Poe story you know where did Edgar Allan Poe get this idea things don't come from nothing we have so many missing people and we know where a lot of the missing children unfortunately went but what about all the missing adults Wait, is this not a reality that this happens? There's some parallel moving energy. And one scene people say, there's a line where they say like, I don't think we're here by accident. I think whatever this is picked us for a specific reason. And that's interesting. You know, why were these particular people picked? What is it about them that, that connects them, that unites them? Um, this isn't giving anything away, but in one scene, one of the, um, one of the characters has to have a blood transfusion and his father is with them, but he's a, it's actually Boyd's son, the main cat guy's son. And he's, he's like a 20 something year old. He's an adult son, but they're kind of got stuck together. They were together when they got into this town and Boyd's son needs a blood transfusion. And Boyd's son is O negative, which we've talked about that. I'm O negative. And so O negatives, O negatives can only take from other O negatives. And so the med school student has become the de facto doctor because she's the only one with any medical experience, even though she's not technically a doctor. She basically tells Boyd, what's your blood type? What's his blood type? They're both O negative. Okay. So I can only use you two to get the blood transfusion. Well, when they said O negative, I looked at my boyfriend, I was like, Oh my God, is everybody in the town? Is that what connects them all? Are they all O negative? Which is what I am. And then no, they're not because everybody else was a different blood type. So, but you know, there's just like, why, how are they all connected? How did the town pick them? That's one mystery, them specifically. You know, another mystery is what is the town? You know, and what are these, these monsters that come out at night? And there's all these theories that people have with what's going on. And so it's super interesting. So anyway, um, with that being said, I just got notified that I can go live on TikTok. So I'm going to be planning a live TikTok soon. I'm going to play around with it just to make sure I understand how to use the live because I really want to pull you guys up into the box with me. Um, with that being said, though, I think TikTok is even more strict about words. So just be careful with the words that you say if we do this. And yeah, that will be fun. We'll figure it out. And also, so on Friday, this Friday, October 11th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, we are dropping, we are premiering our um, panel, our dark side panel, Tales of the Dark Side, with people who have survived the Illumishmati. And so um, tickets are on sale now. Those tickets, most of the proceeds go to the victims of this of these families. So I'm going to play, to end this, I'm going to play the commercial, the trailer. All that information for 50% off your ticket will be down in the description box below. Just because it airs on Friday doesn't mean you have to watch it on Friday. That's just when it's premiering. So it's going to be up forever. So you can buy your ticket and you can wait a month to watch it if you want. So it doesn't matter when you watch it. Don't panic. The ticket just gives you access to watch it however many times you want, whenever you want. It's a lot of people and a lot of conversation. So definitely something you probably can't watch in one sitting anyway. So, um, so yeah, all that information is down in the description box below. All right, you guys. 
best of luck to everybody who is dealing with any type of suffering right now. Please keep um, the victims of Helene in your prayers and your thoughts and, you know, buckle up buttercup because I think we're coming to the, the main event. Hello, everybody. If you are a fan of the occult, especially the darker side of the occult, if you like learning about the stuff that is done in the shadows, boy, do we have an event for you. We want to welcome you to Tales of Survival from the Dark Side. Wow. What a lineup of speakers we have. I've had the privilege of meeting incredible survivors on my channel, uh, Aquarius Rising Africa, over the past four years. And it's been an amazing journey for me to bring them over and just share with more new people sharing their stories. Now, guys, this is going event is going to be held over on Gnostic TV. And Indeed. tickets are are now on sale. They're 50% off, right? Shanti, so we have a link yeah. below. Um, and also, if you want to watch the full trailer of the event, which cannot be shown on YouTube, you can hop over to Gnostic TV and watch that trailer as well. We're looking to release this panel live on Gnostic TV on Friday, October the 11th at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So Tickets are 50% off. And yeah. once, you, once you've bought your ticket, you can watch as many shows as you want and you can watch them as many times as you want. Support our survivors. They deserve to be heard and there's nothing better, more healing for a survivor, for a survivor than to be told, I believe you. So thank you guys. Um, if you have any questions, please make sure to ask Shanti or me down in the comment section, be section below. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you guys over on Gnostic TV. Thank you so much. Bye everybody. Mm -hmm.